Okay, so this is the question, and this is related to the earlier question, question one. And um, it's using the same uh, magnetic force or Lorentz force expression that magnetic force due to magnetic field on a moving charge is equal to charge times V cross B. Now, what's uh, different here is that instead of giving you velocity and magnetic field and asking you for the force, it's uh, asking giving you the direction of force and velocity and asking you what magnetic field there would have been to get that direction of force. So there's a different ways to do this question. Um, you could make a use of something called cyclic permutation, uh, which is, um, I, I don't know where you would have heard of um, cyclic permutation thing relating to the relating to the three-dimensional axis, but, um, <laughs> or if you've heard of it at all. So when we define our three-dimensional axis, we have a right-handed coordinate system, by which we mean when we have x hat cross y hat, we get z hat, and the direction of this z hat is chosen by right-hand rule. Now, once you have this relationship, then you can permute these elements cyclically, and still get the same equality. So let me imagine moving them all over to the left and then by one slot. And then at the end of the leftmost point, I just cycle it over to the rightmost point. Then we would have y hat cross z hat is equal to x hat. And cycle it one more time. We have z hat cross x hat is equal to y hat. And all these are related through cyclic permutation. And, um, uh, if you utilize that fact, then you could rewrite this expression in terms of, okay, if you know the direction of V and F, what should be the direction of B? So you can do that. And in fact, in a different video, I have described that. So in this version, let me just do it uh, without using cyclic permutation. Let me just do it straight forward way. And uh, in this question, then the straightforward way to do it is basically to um, guess and check. So what I'm going to imagine doing is, so I need to do V cross B. And so I have the, the first vector I'm given. So what I'm not given is the second vector. So to get the direction of the second vector, I basically had to try a bunch of things. So let me just try with the part A. So I am giving the upward direction of V. So in applying the right hand rule, I'm letting my hand point in the upward issue direction. And I'm trying to figure out the orientation of my hand, which will give me the direction of force that points to the left. Okay, and so the thumb points in the leftward direction when my hand is in this orientation. So V cross B, and I'm looking at my other screen to see what direction <laughs> that direction will be. So it's into your screen from your perspective, and that is also the correct perspective. So V cross B, if my uh, B, the magnetic field vector is pointing into the screen in this picture. If B is pointing into the screen, then V cross B will give me the leftward force. So that's it. Uh, for A, it should be into screen or into page. Okay, let's keep going. So part B, um, magnetic. So V is pointing downward, and somehow I want to orient my hand so that the direction of force is pointing into the screen. So this would be from your perspective out of screen. I don't want that. I want from your perspective into the... So the thumb is pointing into the screen here. So in this hand orientation, V cross B, the magnetic, so my finger is curling towards a leftward direction from your perspective. So here I would say, okay, the magnetic field must be pointing to the left to give me the force that's pointing into the screen. Let me do it from my perspective. Okay, yeah. Um, this is a, actually one of the really, um, um, I guess, um, 
foundational thing about this cross product is that for most of the things I gesture and do for you, I have to flip left and right because I know my right is your left. Um, with a cross product, I don't have to flip it for you. So if it's something that's supposed to be something that's into the screen for me, then I can just do the same thing. Um, and if it's into the screen for you, then it all works out as long as I accounted for the flipping of left and right. It's kind of an amazing thing. Okay, uh, let me do part C. Oh, wait, let me write this down. So here it's a left word. And for part C, uh, my velocity is, okay, I need to flip. Okay, my velocity is pointing to left, okay? And I want my force to point up. So my I want my thumb to point up. So, okay, uh, in this direction, when I do um, for my fingers, it's pointing from your perspective out of screen. So if we cross B, um, okay, so I want B to point out of screen here. And let me just double check from my perspective. We cross B, okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are the three directions of magnetic field for each of these arrangements that will result in the given direction of force. And so, yeah, yeah that's a, uh, it, this is a right hand rule practice. And as you've seen me do, it kind of involves contorting yourself into positions that you don't want your hand to be. But um, it uh, three dimensional thinking is something that takes a lot of practice. And a right hand rule helps you orient as you think about these things three dimensionally. So, so okay, oh, let me just put in the answers to make sure I got it right. Into page. Wait, this is B. Left word and parse out of page. So, good.